In this video, I'm going to show you five ways of painting camouflage, and I think you'll agree it's the best camouflage you've ever seen. Behold! Yeah, just kidding. But hey, I'm really happy with how these camouflage schemes came out. There's going to be five different ones. I'm going to walk you through each one. We've got jungle camo, we've got snow camo, we've got desert camo, urban camo, and some Martian camo. You can use the chapters in the description to find your way to the particular scheme you like, or if you want to help the channel, you can watch them all the way through. Let's get painting. We'll make a start with the jungle camo, and the first thing we want to do is get this green. So I'm going to take some Caliban green, you can use any dark green, and paint all of the model this colour. So that's the armour as well as the fatigues. And don't forget, if you're not sure about camouflage patterns, just do a quick Google search, you'll find plenty. We'll paint that camouflage pattern on all of the fatigue. So the first thing we need to do is brighten that green a bit. So I'm going to take some Lauren Forest and paint this all over the uniform, not the armour. And this will take two coats to cover properly. While you're waiting for that to dry and apply the second coat, check out our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Download Raid Shadow Legends now and spend this festive period fighting to free the realm of Teleria from the evil Dark Lord Seeroth. It's completely free to play. I was trying to think about my three favourite things in the game and it was tough. This channel is all about art, so I thought, why not talk about the top three themed champions? First up is Arbiter, the immortal guardian of Teleria. How cool does she look and that sword is going to do some serious damage. I love the elven aesthetic of Arbiter and the fact she can shatter enemies with one swing. Next up is Garak, a truly brutal orc with a penchant for setting his enemies on fire and dealing massive damage. Who doesn't love a lean, mean, green fighting machine? If you like your heroes a touch on the undead side, why not check out Vlad? I love the Vampire Lord look and the armour is great. Those attacks are pretty brutal too, drawing the life force out of his enemies. This month, Raid has got a ton of new features, including a brand new dungeon and the introduction of Artifact Ascension. Battle through the Sand Devils Necropolis and earn the precious oil needed to take your artifacts to the next level. Raid also has something extra special this month. They've released a legendary champion based on MMA and pro wrestling legend Ronda Rousey. Best of all, you can get Ronda for free right now, whether you're new or an old player. Just log into Raid for 7 days between now and February the 20th, 2023. Use the special promo code RAIDRONDA to get a bunch of helpful stuff like a 3 day 100% XP boost, 500,000 silver and 5 full energy refills. Remember, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get your exclusive rewards in Raid right now. If you're a new player, click my link in the description or scan my QR code on the screen right now and you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion called Aina, 200,000 silver, one energy refill, one XP boost and one ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here, available for 30 days from the launch of this video for new players only. The first bit of camouflage we'll add is with Xandri Dust. Now if you have Googled a pattern, then follow that. You can see on the screen the pattern that I'm following off Google Image Search, and this is just a case of adding some wavy Xandri Dust lines all over the fatigues. The next colour we'll use is Doom Bull Brown, and exactly the same as the Xandri Dust, we're looking to make sure that this just covers small areas of the uniform, but it crosses between the green and the Xandri Dust as well, so it starts to build up this camouflage pattern. Finally, for the fatigues, we'll then take some black. I'm using AK Intense Black, but you can use whatever black you've got, and just use this to paint some thin lines randomly across the uniform. Again, check that pattern and make sure it intercepts all the different colours, so it'll give that effect of it being quite hard to see. To pull all of that camo together, we'll shade it using some Agrax Earthshade. Now make sure you haven't got too much on your brush because we don't want to flood the model, we just want to get it into those recesses. Once that's completely dry, it may have dulled it down a little bit, so just go back to those original colours that you painted and just pick up the most raised areas on the raised folds, as you can see me doing here. To finish off the armour on the models, I'm just going to make sure that it's all tidy with some Caliban green to correct any mistakes. I'm then going to take a War Boss green and just use this to edge highlight around just to give it a little bit of interest and make it pop a little bit. We don't want to put too much on there because remember we're painting quite a muted scheme. So work your way around, get that done and this jungle camouflage pattern is complete. So this jungle pattern looks pretty effective when you pop it on a base. Remember, it is only a 28mm model. It's not a real-world accurate reflection of camouflage, but it's just to give the impression of camouflage. And I'm really happy with how this one has turned out. Moving to the completely made-up Martian camo pattern scheme, we'll first off prime the model in black and then take corn red and paint this over the entirety of the model. 
Once we've got a nice even coverage of corn red, we'll paint all of the fatigues of the uniform. And we're going to paint this with Doom Bull Brown, which is a nice reddy orange brown that reflects that kind of reddy Martian surface. We'll start the camouflage and the colour we're going to use is Jokero Orange, which is a nice desaturated orange. And in terms of the scheme, I'm looking to go for some blotchy, rounded type effect. So I'm just going to paint this across the fatigues on the uniform, making sure I leave the carapace armour as it is. Next up, we'll use some Wild Rider Red to do exactly the same thing as the Jokero Orange, except we're going to keep these blotches a little smaller and we're going to paint them over that Jokero Orange as well. Now this is a much brighter colour, but we will tone it down in a little bit. Next up, we'll bring all of this model together and shade it all with some Nelm Oil. Now, make sure it doesn't go on too thick and pool, but we are going to paint everything, including the fatigues and that flak armour. When that Nelm Oil is completely dry, we can go back in with those original colours and pick them out as well, just on those top creases, if we want to add a little bit of extra pop to the model. Moving on to that red armour, we want to bring that corn red back, so we're just going to go over and layer up, leaving the Nelm Oil in the recesses. So just take your time with this and be careful, and get a nice smooth coat. Finally, we'll highlight that armour using some Wazdaka red, which is a nice desaturated red, and we're looking to catch those edges again, just to give a little bit of interest and make it stand out a little bit. But the overall scheme should blend in really nicely with the basing. And there you go, a completely made up Mars camouflage scheme that I think will look great against that red base. Now, this was really, really simple, and you can get through an entire squad fairly quickly doing things this way. We'll move on to Urban Camo next, and the colour we're going to use is Mechanica Standard Grey to base the entirety of the model. Now, if you've got Mechanica Standard Grey spray, then of course, by all means, spray your models. It'll be a lot quicker, and you can skip this step. Once that's all dry, we'll take some Administratum Grey and use this to paint all of the fatigues. Now, take your time with this, and it can be a thin paint, so you will need two, maybe three layers in some places to get a nice even coverage. We'll take some rust grey and start the camouflage pattern. So again, I'm looking to paint some wavy lines across the fatigues of the model. This is the pattern I picked to try and emulate. Just take your time, make sure you've got a good point on your brush. Next up, we'll take some fang and we're going to paint this over the colours we've already got down, maintaining that wavy pattern like the example. Again, it's not exact from the example, it's just there to guide the brush strokes. Finally, we'll add some black onto the fatigues, and in terms of this, you can use whatever black you've got, and I'm trying to paint this in horizontal lines, and I'm trying to paint it a little bit like veins, so we'll have branching bits coming off it. Now, use this fairly sparingly to start, you can always go back in to add more. Tidy up any mistakes you've made on the Mechanica's grey armour, and then we'll take some nail oil and wash the entire model. Again, take your time, making sure not to let it pool too much. Once that's completely dry, we can then go back in and pick up any of the fatigues to make sure that they pop a little bit more. Once that nail oil is completely dry, take some Mechanica Standard Grey and just start to tidy up some of those armour panels, leaving the nail oil in the recesses. This is a nice easy step to bring that colour back. When you're finished with that, take some Administratum Grey and just use this to edge highlight all of the flak or carapace armour. And this will just help it pop and add some more interest on the table. And there we go, this urban camo's done. When you combine it with some black leather and black webbing, I think it really looks good and sets it into the base really nicely. We'll move on to Desert Camo next, and this is one of my favourite schemes of the lot. So we've based it with Zandri Dust, I've used the spray, and now I'm going to take some Seraphine Sepia and wash all over the model, making sure that this doesn't settle too heavily in the recesses. We'll then base all of the armour using Steel Legion Drab, so you may need to be careful around bits where this is hidden, so just be careful getting your brush in there, otherwise this is a nice easy step that should be done in just one coat. We'll then highlight all of the fatigues using your Shabti Bone. So this is the majority of the fatigues, just leaving that Seraphine Sepia in the recesses. You will need to take your time with this and be a little bit careful, uh, just to make sure that you don't A, spill it over bits you don't want to be this colour, and B, to get a nice even coverage. We'll start to build the camo pattern now, and the colour we'll use is Morn Fang Brown. We're looking to just add some horizontal splotches across all of the fatigues on the miniature. And this is a nice, easy stage. Again, using a base paint, you should be able to get done with just one coat. We'll enhance that camouflage texture using some black dots. Now use whatever black paint you've got, but I'm just gonna add these little dots across the miniature. Some of them will be on the Ushabti bones, some of them will be on the Morn Fang Brown. But just working across the miniature, this will give you a really nice base to the stone effect camo that we'll finish next. We'll then add some white dots. Now I'm using Pro Acryl Titanium White, but use whatever you've got. And in terms of how we apply this, so we're looking to get those white dots inside the black dots, leaving about three quarters of the black showing. So this is one of those times where you need a really good point on your brush. 
For the body armor, we'll start off giving it some depth by washing it with Agrax Earthshade. Now, take your time, you don't want too much, and we want to make sure we don't spill this over the fatigues. We'll then highlight the armor using some Carrick Stone. Now again, a good tip on your brush, use this sparingly, and we're just looking to edge highlight the character's armor. So take your time, and when it's finished, we'll have a look at it. And there you go, a really nice effective desert camo scheme. When paired with the darker brown on the webbing and belts and leather, I think this looks really, really good. And this is perhaps my favourite of the five schemes that I'm showing you today. For the snow camo, I've primed with white scar spray. and I was going to totally rip off Empire Strikes Back and the Rebel Hoth paint scheme. However, I'm not. I'm going to paint something a little more warhammer -y. So I'm going to take some administratum grey and start to add some jagged blotches across all of the fatigues. Next up, I want to add a cold blue in, so a little bit of rust grey, and again, we're going to mimic that jagged, streaky pattern, looking for some horizontal shapes this time, painting over the administratum grey and the white underneath. To shade everything together, we'll use some salt black grey. Now, really important that you give this a really good shake to get rid of any residue at the bottom of the pot, and also that when we put it on the model, we don't let it settle too heavily in the recesses, because this one is a little bit of a pooler, and we don't want that to happen. When that's dry, we'll start to highlight some of the cloth. Now, I won't worry too much about the camo patterns at the moment because I quite like how they're all blended together. So I'm just going to take some Althuan Grey and use this to highlight the edge of the cloth and any sharp raises or creases that we've got along the way. Finally, we'll just edge highlight that armour using some bold titanium white. Now, use this fairly sparingly because we don't want it to be too bright, but certainly if we have got any areas where we've got too much soul black grey, we can certainly paint over it using this colour. Uh, and that will complete your snow camo. And there you go, really, really simple snow camo. Now, I've gone for a lighter webbing and leather effect on this. I've just taken some Rakar flesh and highlighted with Pallid Witch, a little bit of an Agrath Earthshade wash. Uh, and this looks really effective as well against the base, so I'm really happy with it. And there we have it, five really simple and straightforward camouflage schemes that you could also replicate on any of your vehicles. Now that's a bonus. Don't forget, this is a fantasy universe and this is fantasy camouflage. So it's not going to be accurate to the real world, but it's a lot of fun to do and it gives you something different on the tabletop. If you want to check out how to do the normal Cadian scheme, check out this video here. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time.